Hey guys, thank you for joining us for another video. We have a big one today. What we're going to do is we will be breaking down, previewing, and giving our predictions for one of the biggest rivalries in all of college football, the Red River Rivalry, which will be coming up this Saturday, October 12th. We are going to completely break down the game and try to give our predictions for who's going to win, who's going to lose, and what the final score will be. And we'll also touch on the money lines, the spread, and the over-under as well. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. If you have any comments on this game or any other games, drop them below and I will respond every single week. We go over every single college football game and we also do the same thing for every NFL game as well. If you are a football fan, if you are a sports fan, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed so you can follow along with us this season. We're going to be looking at the Red River Rivalry Showdown, the Red River Shootout, whatever you want to call it, this Saturday, October 12th at 3.30 p.m. We're going to have number one Texas Longhorns back to being number one. I said last week they should have never not they should have never been bumped out of the number one spot anyways. Now they're back, so everything's right. They are undefeated, 5-0. and They'll be playing the number 18 Oklahoma Sooners who are coming in here at 4-1. and one. As of right now, Texas is a pretty heavy favorite. They have an 85.1% chance to win this game. They are 14-point favorites. That's a pretty big spread for an in-conference rivalry game. The over-under here is 49.5. When you look at these two teams, they're kind of going in different directions right now. Texas is riding hot right now. They have a lot to look forward to. Oklahoma's kind of hit a roadblock. The reason that is is mainly due to the quarterback position. They've had a lot of problems the last couple weeks getting first downs, scoring the ball consistently. Texas, they're averaging 45 points a game. They have the number four overall roster according to ESPN. This team is extremely loaded. They have a top 10 defense. They have a top 10 offense, and they are extremely balanced. Steve Sarkeesian's put a lot of work here. You're starting to see the products on the field. You saw the results last season. That's perfectly continued into this season. They lost a lot of pieces last year. They lost a lot of great defensive players. They lost Mitchell. They lost Worthy. They have not missed a step at all so far. Like I said, they're averaging 45 points a game. They're throwing for 326.4 yards per game. They're running for 191.4 yards per game. And their defense only giving up 7 points per game 137.4 passing yards per game 107 yards on the ground they still have a great run defense they had a great run defense last season that's also carried over in into this season the biggest question we have so far with texas is who's going to be the starting quarterback come saturday quinn ewers has been out for about three weeks right now there's no word from steve sarkeesian of who's going to be sued up as the quarterback this saturday could be quinn ewers could be arch manning to me, Manning's performed just fine as the backup quarterback. He has a lot of hype coming into this season, but it's apparent to me that Quinn Ewers is the better quarterback at this point of their career. Manning's only a sophomore, so you can't expect that much of him. Ewers is, what, a five-year senior? So he's the better quarterback. He's a lot more comfortable in the system. If he steps into this game, that's going to take the offense to another level. If it's Arch Manning, the offense is going to be just fine. He's very good at leading this offense, but I think he might score just a couple less points than Quinn Ewers if it's Ewers because he's a lot more experienced veteran quarterback. Brent Venables is going to throw the entire deck at you. He's going to disguise his looks, zone, man-to-man, blitzing. He's going to try to confuse the quarterback because Oklahoma has a really good defense, and they're the number 11 overall roster. They are talented. They are deep. They have a great defensive line. If it's a younger quarterback who hasn't played that much, this is a major stage, and there's a lot of looks he has not seen on the field yet. He hasn't played a great team yet as the quarterback. Quinn Ewers has performed his best on the biggest stage. Think Bama last year, Washington, think Michigan. Whenever the lights were brightest, he stepped up. I would personally rather have him if I was a Texas Longhorns fan suiting up this Saturday, but we don't know if he will be. Right now, at the quarterbacks, you have either Manning or Ewers. You have Blue running the ball. You have Bond as your leading wide receiver. When you look at the Oklahoma Sooners, as I mentioned earlier, Brent Venables has a talented team. The main issue is the offense. They also have a quarterback carousel going on right now. Jackson Arnold, five-star quarterback. He was the starter starting this season, but... Since the Tennessee game, the reins have been given to Michael Hawkins Jr., four, four-star quarterback. He's a mobile quarterback. The guy can throw it. The guy can definitely run it. He ran on Tennessee. He ran on Auburn. He has taken the offense in, in another direction. But Seth Luttrell has to figure something out. 
Oklahoma is too talented of a team. They are too deep to not be scoring enough points on offense. The last, what? They haven't scored. Let's look at their offense here. They haven't, a couple weeks ago, 16-12 Houston, 34-19 Tulane, 15-25 Tennessee, 27. They haven't scored over 34 points in their last four games. That's fine if you won three of those games, but that's not good enough getting into SEC play. The schedule's getting a lot more complicated. It's getting harder right now. The teams are getting harder. You are now starting to play top 10, top 20 defenses every single week going forward, and they're deep, and they're physical lines of scrimmage games. You need the offense to perform at a higher level. Perhaps they unleash Hawkins this weekend. If he doesn't play, could we see some type of mix of Hawkins, Jackson Arnold? Possibly, yeah. But you need to pick one of them. So if it's Hawkins, roll with Hawkins the whole game. If you have two quarterbacks, you have no quarterbacks. Ride with Hawkins. He's mobile. He might be able to take the offense to another level. When you're looking at their playmakers on offense, obviously, you'll have Hawkins as a quarterback. You have Barnes at running back, and you have Burks catching the ball. Those are the leading guys. Oklahoma comes in here. They're averaging 28.6 points a game. That's not bad, but it's average. Average isn't going to cut it in the SEC. They're throwing for 184.4. They're running for 128.6, but solid defense, only giving up 16 points per game, 240.4 yards to the air. So there will be opportunities for Texas to be able to test the Sooner secondary, but the Sooners do have a really good rush defense. They're only giving up 105.6 yards on the ground. This is a tough game. This is a rivalry game. All those stats, all of the accolades, they all go out the window when you're playing in a rivalry game. Texas is massive favorites here. I would be surprised if Texas is able to cover that spread. That's a pretty big spread for a rivalry game. But if it's Hawkins versus Ewers, Hawkins is a freshman, young quarterback. Texas is going to eat him alive. That's a really massive stage for him. But if it's Manning versus Hawkins, Manning is more experienced. He's a sophomore. He's more suited. He has more reps under his belt so far. But still, he hasn't played a team like the Sooners and the Brent Venables defense. So I think Oklahoma's defense, if it's Manning, they're going to be able to keep this game close. This is a for real defense. Like I said, they're deep. They're physical. They're talented. Both teams want to set everything at the line of scrimmage as their foundational point. Own the line of scrimmage. Own the game. That's both teams' philosophies. I wouldn't be surprised if Quinn Ewers doesn't play. There's no word on that. I don't have anything to base that off of. I'm just going to assume he hasn't been announced yet. So I'm just going to bank on it continuing to be Manning. Although Ewers should be starting at this point. He did have a bye week. But I'm going to say that Manning starts. And this game is really close to first half. Oklahoma's in it up till the late third, fourth quarter. That's when Texas's physicality starts to pull away. They are technically the more talented team right now, although it's not a big gap between these two teams. They're both great teams. I have Texas winning this one, 32-20. I do not have them covering the spread. I do have them going over just slightly, but I think that spread has to come down by game time. It can't stay at 14, but maybe if they announce Ewers, the spread could go up. If Ewers plays, I think they're going to win it like a 34 to 20, 34, 17 game. I think Texas is on another level this season, but with it being a rivalry game, anything's possible. But as of right now, it's Manning versus Hawkins Jr. Manning pulls it out second half and Texas wins this one 30 to 20. They still have their sights that nothing's going to remove them from that number one slot except the Ohio State Oregon game. Whatever happens with that, the winner of that game could supplant them at one. But I think we're going to have a revolving door this season of who the number one team is all the way through the end of the year. So that's our breakdown. That's our prediction of the Red River Rivalry 2024 version, Texas versus Oklahoma. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. If you have any comments on this game or any other ones, drop them below and I will respond. Thank you.